You are listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics with a unique perspective. Here's your wild card, Richard Kearney, and your whimsical, Ryan Pulley. Hey, 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 welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick. That's Big Show. We are warped. Show, what's good there? I'm good, brother. How are you? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> is that the defending AFC uh, West champs? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Trying to. The five-time AFC champion uh, game uh, participant. Yeah. And now, and hosting five times in a row. Now, here's my thing. That's a feat that very few have accomplished. I don't I'm not I'm looking at you cheaters. I don't I don't want to hear nothing about the Patriots. I will say this. More important than the Patriots, y'all have to win Sunday. Because what's the name of the AFC Championship trophy? Lamar Hunt. And if it's named after your owner, you damn well better win it if you're playing for it. Yes, sir. We're going to give it the old college try. Yes, because the Chiefs have been to three Super Bowls, won two of them. The Raiders have been to been, five Super Bowls. We've been to four Super Bowls. Won Doesn't two matter. Doesn't matter. The Raiders have been to five. Won right. Three. You said, th- you said okay. three. Uh, so I'm off. But but the point I'm making is uh, your bitter rival. facts correctly. Your bitter rival has held your trophy more than you. You can't this let that true. happen, bro. You can't let that however, happen. However, it wasn't named the Lamar Hunt trophy when you guys won it. Just saying. When did it change? I don't know, but it it, it wasn't in the 70s. We also won in the 80s, too. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching uh, here. You I'm know. just trying to see. You know. I mean, true. Like, when was the last time you were at an AFC Championship game? Not as a viewer on TV. 2001. Oh, no, actually, it was 2002. Oh, I that's remember. Because right, we, we lost to Super Bowl to Tampa Bay. That's right. Gruden knows his own team. That's the last time that we won the AFC Championship, too. We lost in Super Bowl to Tampa Bay. They, they got us both. So check it but out. But we are on the distinguished list, you know. Uh, we got five straight. I think Madden's Raiders did it five times in a row, and then obviously the Cheaters did it eight. So yeah, we're we're not discussing them. Um, Got to give them their props, brother. Before we get to uh, this star-studded football uh, bonanza that we like to call the Slightly Warped Podcast, I want to go over a couple of things in the news. So, first things first, and, you know, I saw this on, I believe it was uh, D.L. Hughley's um, Instagram. Aretha Franklin's 1968 song, A Natural Woman, has been deemed offensive by the trans community. (laughs) Now, keep in mind, this song came out in 68, and... They say it perpetuates multiple harmful anti-trans stereotypes. There's no such thing as a natural woman. Now, this is what (laughs) DL had to say. Stop. Just stop. This song was written in 19 motherfucking 68. His words, not mine. Freedom to identify or classify or assign whatever you feel like you're right. Cool. Cool. But no one's rights should infringe on anyone else's, especially how they feel, like the song says. Contrary to what I guess is unpopular opinion, there is a such thing as a natural woman. Nothing about this song, written over a half century ago, has anything to do with hate or harm to anyone. This was a song about love and affection. Is nothing sacred anymore. I got to side with DL because, you know, if this is the case, then shouldn't we as straight people say that uh, Aerosmith's dude looks like a lady is offensive? (laughs) 
Point taken. All right, so check it out. It's more sad news. This January 20, what, 3rd? Yes, 24th? Sir. Yeah, 24th. today's 24th. There have been more mass shootings this year than days on the calendar. 36, by the way. Really? 36 mass shootings in the U.S. This is wow. sad. Uh, we, we, I don't know what's going on with people that they can just flip out and try to, you know, pull a gun or rifle or whatever out and just try to level people. Um, there's no punchline here. No joke. This is just real talk. This shit needs to stop. Yeah, I think we said it last week, but nobody has uh, respect for life. No, mm -hmm. they don't. No respect whatsoever. Okay, so check this out. <clears throat> Let's get back to the lighter side, because we're all about the laughs here. Larry Fitzgerald once made a hole-in-one while playing golf with Barack Obama. But he couldn't celebrate because of the Secret Service. Now, huh. I get that. If you jump up and down... They will probably bust a cap in his ass, and <laughs> that would be that would not have been a good look for uh, then President Obama. So, Larry, or then wide receiver for the Cardinals, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Larry won't be able to play today because he has a bullet in his ass. <laughs> he got Forrest Gump. How, how does that look on the injury report? <laughs> right. Okay. What is this mess here? Have you ever heard of a comedian called Greg Locke? No. Well, I no, I don't think so. All right. He was, during a Reawaken America event at <clears throat> Christian hate preacher Greg Locke's tent, um, former SNL cast member, okay, the comedian's name is Jim Bauer. Jim Brewer, Jim Brower, whatever it is, Jim Brewer. Yes, e -R -E. I know who I am. I know who he is. He began to do some real off-the-wall, insensitive stuff, thinking it was comedy. Uh, he was he mocked flu shots, vaccines, and Damar Hamlin from the Buffalo Bills. Um, it says here, Hamlin, of course, is the uh, player that collapsed on the field in the game against the Bengals. Uh, late in the regular season, and he did need emergency CPR on the field and was rushed to the hospital. Brewer brought up the NFL while speaking at the event, and then he fell flat on his face and stayed motionless on the floor, much to the delight of those in the tent who must have thought Hamlin's collapse after the tackle when the Bills took on the Bengals was funny. Now, I hate to speak bad about people. But in some strange way, I kind of wish that Brewer didn't get up after that. And then we'd see what's really funny. Because you don't. True. It was probably a joke in bad taste. But Bauer, or whatever his last name is, he's he's a shock comic like Bill Burr. And that's, what, that's just what his shtick is. He takes things that most people are sensitive about, such as the Hamlin thing, um, and pokes fun at it. Yeah. Because it pisses people like you off. Pretty much. Here's something that made me raise my eyebrow. <clears throat> Kobe Bryant explained, and this is old, y'all. We know Kobe's no longer with us. He explained why Dennis Rodman was a better athlete than Michael Jordan. Kobe went on to say that's because Dennis could stay out all night, party, get laid, and drunk, and be back in time to get 10 rebounds for the championship game. Okay, maybe Dennis was the better athlete. Where's the lie? I, I couldn't hang. <laughs> All right, finally here. There was a report, because we're going back to DeMar Hamlin. Someone mm -hmm. is trying to spread rumors that DeMar is actually dead. Yeah, it says here that uh, he attended the Buffalo Bills playoff game on Sunday, which they showed him on there, and apparently led to some social media users to conclude that he was dead just because they didn't get a clear shot on him, you know, through the glass. 
because really? of the snow. I mean, are we really going there? <laughs> that uh, that don't look like him. It must be and, somebody else. And the problem is, is there are people that believe that crap. People will believe anything you tell them nowadays. There's people thinking that Elvis is still alive. It's people who think Tupac is still alive. Right? He's chilling with Biggie somewhere on an island. Anyway, this is what we're going to do for you fine folks who watch the Slightly Warped podcast. Sometime between now and the end of this show, I'm going to think up a rumor and we're just going to start to spread it tomorrow, show and I. And we're going to see by this time next week for the show how far that rumor has come. So now that I've volunteered to get those wheels turning, let's focus on this show. All right. I told you I want to talk about the NFL today because we are getting ready for Championship Sunday. Now, yes, before I get to the final four, I want to talk about the other half of the NFL's Elite Eight. Those four teams that either valiantly or in flames went down this past Sunday. So, in no particular order, I want to start with Buffalo. Um, This team had home field, snow, everything was pointed to go their way. And it couldn't have went worse. Are they contenders or are they just pretenders? You know, it, this is poignant because we were talking about Mr. Hamlin. I honestly think that the emotional high and lows that they experienced in the last month finally took a toll on them this past week. They looked emotionally drained, like they were just going through a seven on seven drill, basically. I mean, there mm -hmm. was no there was no fire. Um not to take it away from the team that won, but it just it just seemed like they were just tired. You know, I think that was, I think that the, they were just drained. They were probably, if they would have got a bye, I think that they would be in the championship game. If they would have got the number one seed. Because <clears throat> they needed that bye to kind of reset. And they had to go from not playing or playing a Monday night game to that being canceled, watching their partner almost die, to immediately the following Sunday playing the Patriots, you know, Dog walking them all across the field, emotional win to crap. Now we got to play another division game in the wild card round against the Dolphins, barely beat them. Mm -hmm. And now we're up against the juggernaut, which is the Bengals. I, I just think they just ran out of gas. And by the way, I don't know who it was for the Bengals, but they made a good statement too. They said the Bills have been built to stop the Chiefs. They haven't been built to stop the Bengals. Yeah, I mean, I <clears throat> the Bills made moves in the offseason to compete and beat the Chiefs because that was their that was their goal line. Um, but those guys were hurt. You know, uh what's his name wasn't playing? Um Von Miller. Yeah, Von Miller. He wasn't playing. And he he was the one of the sole reasons why they beat the Chiefs in Week Six. Um, I was at that game, and he destroyed our tackles. So it wasn't the team they had on paper at the beginning, but this is the NFL. So I just think Next they were just up. emotionally drained. You know, it just it's too much for them. And and I think that that emotional roller coaster has actually been going on since the beginning of the season because they could never let that thirteen seconds go. I agree. I agree. But with the fact that, and, and let's be honest, if you were watching the Monday night game that got canceled, the Bengals were dog walking them then as well. Yeah. Weren't, weren't they mean, up uh, 14 to three or something like that? They were, they were getting or, ready. They, they were getting ready to go up. They were seven to three. Were, okay. Yeah. They were on their way to scoring another touchdown. And they're, the Bengals, yeah. 
Bengals were the better team, are the better team, and Josh Allen's not top tier quarterback. Before we get rid of the Bills here, friend of the show, Kevin Manning sent a funny ass stat. I got to read this to you because you brought up Josh Allen. And my friend, you were absolutely right. Where is that at? It's it's an old school to new school comparison. All right. If Mahomes and Burrow are this generation's Brady and Manning, that makes Josh Allen Philip Rivers. Think about it. Allen has a huge regular season of stats, excruciating playoff losses, terrible turnovers, and is usually playing with an injury. And by the way, he and Rivers both wore number 17. This is true. This is true. Although I think River got him beat in the kids department. <laughs> yeah, hey, um, Josh, Josh, if you're listening to the show, you better step up your bedroom game. You got some catching up to do. <laughs> uh, I think, you know, just another fun comparison is uh, Josh Allen is the white Dante Culpepper. Yeah. Same but, body style, same arm strength, run the same, can just throw the ball through a brick wall, but will right take now, his team nowhere. Hey, didn't Cole Pepper take the Eagles to the Super Bowl, though? Well, not take he them. Played. I guess Terrell Owens was on that team, too. So. Cole Pepper played for the Vikings. Who am I thinking of? Oh, I'm thinking McNabb. of McNabb. Never mind. You're right. Fair comparison. <clears throat> Poor guy. That means Josh Allen may never get to the Super Bowl. I think they said, too, that Allen was the team's leading rusher this year. He had all over 800 yards rushing. Now, what does that say about your running game, then? Well, I mean, but, but they were designed runs. That was, you know. Yeah, but do he, you he plays like a Lamar. quarterback like that? No. Hey. That's why Lamar didn't play the last six weeks of this season. Exactly. All right, let's move on to Jacksonville. This is a team that I think played above their heads, especially late in games. I don't think they're a bad team, but I wouldn't be surprised if they don't make the playoffs next year. I told you at the beginning of the year, the Jaguars were better than everybody thought they were. You were right. Because of their head coach. And Trevor is, he's, he's a decent quarterback. He's a decent quarterback. Yeah. They're going to put some more pieces around him. They'll be back. They're going to be a contender. They're going to be a contender, especially in their weak-ass division. They're going to be a contender. All right, you bring up an interesting point, their weak division. So we see what happened when they ran into Kansas City. And I know that it was the score was closer than the game really was. I I'll tell you what, if Mahomes wouldn't have got it, if Mahomes wouldn't have gotten injured as early as he did, that score would have been closer to what the Eagles did to the Giants. I, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. So yeah, Jacksonville may get back, but I don't I still don't see them being a powerhouse in, in the AFC. There's too many other good teams. True, but you don't need to be a powerhouse because the good teams are going to beat up on each other. Also, true. you know, the Colts, I mean, the 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 Bengals, the Chiefs, the Bills, throughout the year, they're going to, because we're going to see each other every year. You know what I mean? So it's, we're going to beat oh. up on each other and they just got to sneak in. And, you know, they were the fourth seed this year. They could be, I wouldn't say the third seed. It'd be kind of hard to displace those top three teams, but that they're in a weak ass division. That is true. How about them Cowboys? Home again. I mean, I'm I'm not trying to be funny about this. I'm not trying to be a hater because I really don't care one way or another about Dallas. But let's be honest. They weren't going any farther than they did. They were not. I'm surprised that they hung with the Niners. That defense kept them in it. But at the end of the day, Dak Prescott was still Dak Prescott. He's not and a that's... bad quarterback, but he's not a great quarterback. Oh no, but you don't have to be great to win. That's 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 a misconception, and we'll we'll go into that later. But um 
I was surprised that how close that game was the way it was played. Like I figured, you know, if they went score for score, eventually the 49ers would start pulling away. But Mm -hmm. defensively, that was a fun game to watch. Yes. And if you take away like the second interception that Dak threw, yeah, he probably shouldn't have threw it into double coverage. I get that. But you know, it bounced off one guy, bounced off the other guy, and the third guy caught it. You know, there was three guys there. It's still a pick. That first one he threw was just retarded. He shouldn't have threw it. If he could have pulled those in, no, it could be Dallas in the game this week. Now, back to the 49ers. Well, I will we'll speak more on them when we talk about them versus the Eagles. But can we just say, you know, aside from Travis Kelsey, you guys is tied in. Kittle's a beast. Oh, yeah. Kittle's a monster. Yeah. All I right. love Kittle. Final loser, the New York football giants. I think they were doing it with smoke and mirrors up until they ran into the Eagles, and then they ran into a good team, and they they felt the wrath of the football gods. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say they were smoke and mirroring it because they were decent. I mean, you know, they were – the the Vikings were smoking mirrors. Fair enough. That's a good point. The, gi- the Giants were what they we thought they were. They had already been dog walked twice this year by the Philadelphia Eagles. So this wasn't a surprise, you know. I think I'm I'm almost positive that they almost got beat by the same score in the regular season, like 38 to 7 or 38 to 10 or something like that. So they didn't really stand a shot. Philly was on a week's bye. You know, they weren't going anywhere after that. They went as far as they could this first year. Um, I'm kind of curious. Your boy, Derek Carr, might be a giant next year because Danny Dimes is a free agent. Is he? Hmm. Yeah. Now, I figure him to be in New York, but <clears throat> I figure him to be a Jet, but we will see. I think hey, if he was got- Derek Carr, put yourself, you're Derek Carr. Do I want to play in the same conference where I have to go through Burrow, Mahomes, Allen, or do I want to go to the Giants where I only have to go through Jalen Hurts? Oh, yeah. You're a giant, easily. You tell the agent to make that happen. Yeah. That's that's what I think. If he's going to New York, I think it, I'd be calling up the Giants and Dayball, uh, you know, his first year. He should be coach of the year as well as he had them Giants playing. <clears throat> think so? Yeah, you have to look at what they did the last couple of years. I want to say that look uh, how Doug the Peterson, Bills looked. Look how the Bills looked without Dayball, because those were the same guys. Now, granted, true. Doug Peterson too could be in the. I'm not going to say that, Doug that's, Peterson shouldn't that's be in there. Would, that's who I would go with as coach of the year. But Trevor Lawrence is way better than Danny Dimes. Yes, yes. So that's where I would give Dayball just a little bit edge because you did more with less you know or who did the same the with year? less you know who should be coach of the year and i'm about exactly. to be real funny for this but indianapolis's interim coach should be coach of the year that dude had yeah. no business coaching an nfl team no experience yet he made and he made himself some employment now, that's my only, hero right there and i think the only team he beat was the raiders it was they lost every step of the way up after that. So that's that's coach of the year right there. He swindled his way into a job. That's hustler of the year. I, I don't need, know about coach I need of the to year. I need to find me some dirty pictures on Jerry Jones or something so I can <laughs> become a head coach. That's a job I would not want. I just want the paycheck. I'll I'll be like you just, Carol. Oh, I'm with I'll, you too. I'll yes. deliberate. I'll yeah. deliberate. And, and then know, if it doesn't go right, I'll fire the coordinators. <laughs> Keep me put another me, year. <laughs> put me in a – put me in – I. but you're under a, a microscopic spotlight in Dallas. I don't know if I want to be that coach. I'll just be like Bill Belichick. I'll, this is this is me during the uh, post-game press conference. Well. <laughs> Not for Dallas, you won't be. <laughs> Jerry loves to talk. We'll let him talk. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the winners. We got two important game ma- matchups here. First, the NFC Championship game. It's the early game anyway. The 49ers are going to the Eagles. 
we both said that we like what we've seen from the 49ers, but I'm going to go a step further and say I like what I've been seeing all year from the Eagles. It's going to be a tough game. I, I think both of these championship games are going to be tough and close. I'm giving the edge to the Eagles on this. Just because they're at home? Yeah. That's fair. <clears throat> they both got some dogs on their team. I yes, mean, they it, do. you start, they got some, I mean, they hit hard. Like, the, the cool thing about these two conferences or conference games is, like, you have, with the NFC side, you have two teams that are just got, they're loaded on both sides of the ball. And then with the AFC, you have two premier quarterbacks that you want to see duel it out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Philly um to go ahead and represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. Um but man, I expect Phil or 49ers to give them a battle. I think it won't be finally, 38 to 7. No, but I think we're finally gonna see Brock Purdy be a rookie. I don't know. We kind of seen him be that way last week. Kind of, but I've seen vets, you know, have worse games. I mean, I think Philly's Ooh. defense is going to make him come back down to earth. I don't know. That old, that old line the Niners have is legit. They are. And that's why I think the game's going to be close. But I'm giving that edge to the Eagles. Give me a score. <sighs> I'm real close. 27-24 Eagles. Fair. Late field goal to win it. Jalen Hurts on his legs gets them in the field goal range to win it. That's fair. I like that. I like that. I agree with you. Same score? Yeah, I was going to say 28-24. So, yeah, 27-24 worked. Okay. Now in the AFC... This is one that will have you grinning ear to ear because I'm going to tell you straight out, I'm also going with the home team on this one. And I know everybody's like, well, Cincinnati owns them. Cincinnati owns them. You can only beat a team so many times. Sooner or later, they're going to beat you. That It just is what it is. And, you know. Okay. Before you go any further with that, and I'm not trying to, to throw salt into a wound, but when is the last time the Raiders beat the Chiefs? Two years ago, uh, Gruden. Right. How yeah, many so, years before? How many times before that? Oh, you'd have to go back a couple of years for that, too. So, yeah, it, it happens. When's the last time the Broncos beat the Chiefs? <laughs> I don't think I got a memory for that. <laughs> it's been a while. So, with that being said, you know, yes, eventually we're going to lose to the Broncos. And eventually we lost to the Raiders. This, you know, that whole eventually thing, I don't know. I'm looking at the get what happened in the past. I'm not really too worried about it. Um, but I I interrupted you. Go ahead, finish your thoughts. Well, I, I just believe that Kansas City, they they're that team. They they know what's at stake here. And Andy's gonna have them ready. They're not gonna lose to the Bengals again. They've seen the Bengals give them their best three times. Okay, and those games were all close. So if you just concentrate on the little things, and Andy has them prepared. Also, going to be a close game. The X factor is that high ankle for Patrick Mahomes. If he does any kind of scrambling in this game, any kind of scrambling, that's going to give them the edge. I, I, I like what you're saying. I do like what you're saying. And I'm... I'm... Now keep in mind this is Raider fan. Raider no, fan but this saying is, this. This I'm perplexed because I'm looking at it. I'm trying not to look at it through Chiefs colored glasses. And okay. I'm not. I'm clear. I know, I know. Well, you don't have Chiefs colored glasses. You I don't have anything red except for the Star Wars stuff behind you. I will jump up and down if the Bengals win this game, but I don't see it. I don't see it. The Bengals match up very well against the Chiefs. They do. Now, wouldn't if, it be ironic? Wouldn't it be ironic if uh, if they do, and then Joe Burrow goes on to win the Super Bowl? Because then you're going to have all this talk talking about he's the 
best in the league when it's clearly not. Mahomes is still the better quarterback in the league. See, so, yeah, I again, I have to kind of disagree with you there. <laughs> I mean, they're so close that we're nitpicking differences. Uh, but I mean, Burrow makes the better decisions. He just does yeah. with the ball. He makes he doesn't make stupid mistakes throwing interceptions to like Mahomes has a far complex sometimes where he just yeah. throws the ball because he believes that he can get it in there. And that's why we as Chiefs fans absolutely love him. However, it's also why he can make us cry too. <laughs> like I, I he did last year in the AFC championship game. I would agree with that. Now <laughs> you know, so I'll I'm, say this. I'm, um when it comes to the, the Chiefs, and God, I don't want them to win a, a third Super Bowl because then they'll be tied with the Raiders, but, you know, it is what it is. It's going to happen, bro. It, uh, that's what I was going to say. Eventually, the, here, there's that word again, eventually, because I, I think they've got another three years in that window, that WAP, that window of opportunity. Window of opportunity, woo, whatever it is. Just three? Yeah, and here's the here's the reason why I say just three. Um, speed starts to diminish, and the big diminishing factor is the money. One reason why you lost Tyreek Hill, which let me go back another step. If y'all lose this game, do we have to hear people say, well, if they had Tyreek? Nah, because... Because statistically, Mahomes is better without Tyreek. Uh, I've seen so it. We yeah, can, he is. We can put He's that more to efficient. rest. They're more efficient. But Mahomes is only 27 years old. So the window is not going to close when he turns 30. And those I guys that are I think his slow, window will be closed, but, right, but you're going to lose revamp. a lot of parts. We lost a lot of parts from our 18 Super Bowl. This yeah. is not the same team that we have. We have a young drafted team on defense compared to the long in the tooth honey badger and can't catch a cold Sorensen and, you know, D drop Robinson, you know, those guys, they're not uh, on this and, team. And, you know, I'll say this, if the front office makes <clears throat> good draft picks and continue to do that and get good free agents, that window does get bigger. It does. So if they can keep I that think up. Our, I think our window is good for the next decade or so. You know, not saying we're going to win and be in the championship game every year, but, you know, we're going to have a shot more than the next three years. But like I was saying, the, the, my Chiefs mind says Kansas City all the way. And I'm going to say Kansas City is going to win the game. But my NFL analytic mind says Bengals. All right, I'm, on re I'm on record saying the Chiefs, but. I'm going to get my this score. And, and, and this this score is a little bit wider margin than the one I did for the Eagles Niners, but to me the game is still going to be close. Kansas City pulls away late. 34-27. Chiefs. It ha I think the last 3 times we played them with Burrow that we they've only won by a field goal. So I don't know. There Arrowhead magic is about to happen. We had Arrowhead the Chiefs, magic. The last Chiefs year. are going to be behind in this game for most of the game, and that's oh, no. where they that play. I'll dis that I'll disagree with you. I won't say they'll be behind most of the game. He, if, if if Mahomes is seventy five percent or better, this is going to be a fun game. If he's less than that and he's just stoic in the pocket, it's going to be rough for us. It's going to boil down to tackle play and if we can keep constant pressure with our front four and let our dbs and linebackers hunt that's what it's going to come down to now when i say behind i don't mean by a touchdown or more i just think maybe a field goal or so um it could be one point but i think once kansas city takes that lead they're going to capitalize on a joe burrow mistake they're going to make him make a mistake and then they're going to make that lead a little bit bigger man i hope you're right I just see that happening. The crowd is going to get into it. Arrowhead magic. Seen it before. Been involved with it before. You know me as Raider fan. I can step back and look at this logically. I can see this True. happening. I can see it happening too. I can also see it falling flat on our face. 
here's the thing that'll happen. with it. Here's here's the thing too. I also think that that loss last year to Joe Burrow and the Bengals, um, dr- it drove Mahomes crazy mm-hmm. for the entire off season. So. I, I think that you know that the the way that we lost last year has been has been hanging on Mahomes' neck around his neck for the entire off season, and he's hearing everybody say this guy's better, this dude is better, blah blah blah. You can't win without Tyreek, and I think that he kind of gave everybody the finger all year long, and. There was something special about seeing him get injured last week and his uh, body language, uh, the way he reacted, the guts, the moxie he had, the way he came back in and played in that second half. Um, That this whole week building up, everybody's kind of going, well, you know, Mahomes got the ankle, da 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 da. He's going to hear all of this noise this week. And I think that's going to be the little extra something that pushes the Chiefs over the edge, over the top, uh, to be successful and and beat uh, the Bengals. I, I'm excited to see that. Um, however, you know, I would not be surprised or devastated if it went the other way. Yeah, and this is that game that can go either way. I know we both agree that um, Niners Eagles is going to be close, but we both agree that it's going to be Philly. I mean, but that I mean, I will, I I can see 49ers winning that game too. I just don't think that the Philly Philadelphia Eagles are going to allow that to happen. Now, let I mean, me but ask you this: Let's not go ahead. Chiefs Eagles in the Super Bowl. Would you rather see that or Chiefs Niners? To be honest, I'm gonna be I'm gonna do my Frank Clark Clark impression. I don't think give a damn who it is. They gotta play us. The you know, Niners, both of, the Niners. Both of those teams match up well. I mean, we match up well against them. So it it wouldn't matter. The Niners, though, they remember that loss in the Super Bowl. You're up 20 mm-hmm. to 10 and you blow it. You blow it. And, so and now you got to do it with a rookie quarterback. Oh, Kansas City's defense will eat them alive. Yeah, I, I don't even think that'll come into. I mean, it will in media if that happens. Yeah, you know that'll be the big talk. But I don't think the team will actually think that. They're two different teams. Yeah, they are. Um. So, but we are we are in agreement that. Uh, Kansas City will win Sunday. Yeah, I'm picking the Chiefs. Now I got again, I got 34 to 27. Chiefs, you got a score for me? Mm, 24-21. Hmm. So you got a three point game. I got a well, seven I mean, point game and you got a three I, point game. I think that's what it's been, you know. That I don't see that changing. Now, conversely, and, and I meant to say this too, that's part of the reason why I'm going with the Chiefs. I think that the Bengals might be a little bit too full of themselves. They uh, are we, given a lot of... We done done it three times. Board. Yeah. They are given a lot of bulletin board material for the Chiefs. I'm not going to lie. I've seen a lot of that. And it would be nice to just smack the cockiness off of Burrow's face type of thing. I mean, because let's face it. I mean, head-to-head does matter when you talk about who's the better quarterback. So I give the slight edge to Burrow just because of head-to-head. Their intangibles are about the same. Um, Decision-making, I'm going to give that a little bit edge to Burrow. But also, accomplishments mean something. I mean, Mahomes Mm -hmm. has a chip, been to a Super Bowl and lost. Uh, won an MVP, going to win the MVP this year. So, um, you know, those things matter too. Yeah, they, they do. Uh, coaching is an X factor. I give that to Kansas City. I agree. I think uh, Andy Reid's can scheme anybody against anybody. I, I I would put Andy above any coach in this in the league right now. 
position players, who's got the better wide receivers? The Bengals. You think so? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Jamar there's... Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. Oh, I all three. About Boyd. Okay, okay. I forgot about Boyd. Yeah. All three number ones on any other team. Running back. I'm going to give that edge to the Bills or to the Bengals as well. They have two phenomenal backs, Mixon and Pirine. I actually think Pirine is better than Mixon. I don't know if it's just because he missed so much time with the injury and Pirine was showing out. But at the same time, I like what your boy Pacheco does in the backfield, man. Oh, yeah, he's awesome. The problem is, is that Andy Reid doesn't run the ball. We could that have is the second. True. We could have the second coming of, you know, Bo Jackson in our backfield. It wouldn't matter. You know who oh, would be great yeah. in a Chiefs uniform next year, just to be situational is that is uh, Ezekiel Elliott. Mm. Be perfect. He doesn't have to run, but maybe eight nine times a game. Him and Pacheco as a two headed monster. Wouldn't that be something? Although Josh Jacobs is also going to be a free agent. Oh, they'll sign him. You can forget that. But, okay, but let's keep going. You're talking about positions. Uh, O-line. Tight end. Oh, I, I want to go tight end next. Oh, yeah. tight, oh, definitely Kelsey. Chiefs. Got that. Yeah, I can see that. Um, hell, who is the tight end for the Bengals? I done forgot just that fast. I want to say, I mean, I it don't, don't matter because we're still going with Kelsey. <laughs> we're still going obviously with he's obviously it's nobody that we can remember. O line, I'm giving that to the Chiefs. The interior, yes. The tackles, I don't know. Our tackles are sus. Kind of are, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's a tough one. I, I'm still, I'm still, you know, Chiefs have the edge there. I partially I blame I Orlando that. Brown for Mahomes' high ankle sprain. I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there. Mm. Defense. The line. I'm going to say it's a wash. Secondary. Experience. Bengals. Chiefs. Youth. I'm a slight edge scheme. I'm gonna go I'm with gonna say... I'm gonna go with the Bengals on this. And the reason why I say the Bengals is because if you're talking about the secondary, who do you have to guard this weekend? I take my chances with Juju and uh Valdez Scandling before I would take my chances with Jamar Chase. Can you name their secondary? Mm, I cannot. I know Eli Apple's back there, but that's it. Right. I mean, if everything goes right, don't forget. I mean, yes, Juju is – he is a big-body receiver like Kelsey. So you have basically two guys that play wide receiver and tight end <clears throat> coexistently, and they can be intermatched. Same player, same type of route runner. Um, and then – Kelsey's actually helped Juju with his route running and saying, hey, you know, instead of doing the, you know, three up and four out, you know, just kind of do a little wiggle room, you know, just kind of float type of thing. And Juju, once Juju realizes, hey, I really have some freedom here, he's been playing a lot better. Tony is the X factor in our wide receiving core. Mm, I forgot about him. That was Kadarius a good pickup, Tony. by the way. That was a damn good pickup. Oh, yeah. Kadarius Tony is our X Factor. And if everything I'm hearing is correctly, McCole Hardman should be playing this weekend. So there are your two speedsters. You have your two possession guys with Kelsey and Juju. And then you have your, you know, your alternates with MVS and Sky Moore. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like our wide receiver because we can do things. So, like, we know we have to we have to guard Jamar Chase and we need to make sure that we are coverage sound on Higgins and Boyd. We only, that's really it. And if our defensive line and linebackers can do that and also play the run, 
decently enough, we got a shot. You put, we spread you guys out with those five guys. We're going to be difficult. You know, on the Mc, McKinnon and Pacheco in the backfield, I mean, it's, I, I like, I like our chances. See, now I'm starting to hype myself up that the Chiefs are going to take this. Hey, you mentioned McKinnon. What happened to Edward Jalair? <laughs> he got hurt. So he is injured. Or yeah, he's been on injured. He's been on the IR. I think they just elevated him. But I'm pretty sure he'll probably be playing with Carolina next year. We're going to get rid of him, I'm sure. I mean, I can't say you're wrong for that because Pacheco is a beast. Here's the thing. If I was a GM, I would never, ever, 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 ever draft a running back in the first round. Don't need to. Not in this day and age. Agreed. Running backs, what's that saying? They come a dime a dozen. And they actually, I mean, they do. So you got Pacheco, who we picked up in the seventh round. You know, and that you brought that up, and I seen this the other day on, uh, there was talking about something on, page, on Pacheco, and he actually, when he got drafted, his draft day video, he told uh, Veach on the phone, I'm getting ready to take somebody's job. He didn't say who's. He just said, I'm going to take somebody's job. He called the shot the day he got drafted. That's a hell of a way to look at it. I can't be mad at him for that. I mean, technically, that's what you do in the league at any position. You're there to take somebody's job until somebody takes yours. That's right. Well, Big Show, this has been fun. I'm looking forward to next, next week. week. Yeah. And yeah. I hope that everything goes as planned and – we get our uh, our special guest coming on. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah, I I do too. Um, it's gonna be interesting. So, um, I don't want to say I'm rooting for the Chiefs. I'm rooting for you a good are. game. I'm rooting you for a good are. game. I'm rooting for a good game. You kind of are because it's gonna help our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. See what? So you remember remember the show uh, Family Matters with Urkel and Laura? Did and I you know do how, that? Yeah, you know every time he would talk, he'd look at it and go, "I'm wearing you down." Remember last week when I said I got a spot for you on the Chiefs bandwagon, and you was like, "No," but now I got you rooting for the Chiefs. I'm wearing you down, big brother. I'm wearing you down. So what you're telling me is you got inside information that a certain team wearing silver and black might land Tom Brady. No, 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 no. You don't want Tom Brady. I know I don't. Because that might cause me to defect. <laughs> well, if that's the case, I'm making the phone call now. <laughs> you look good in red, man. Oh, I've got some red shirts and stuff like that, but they don't have an arrowhead on them at all. We're going to have to fix that. Another time, another day. I'm going to get you a black, a silver and black chief shirt. I have those too. <laughs> I might be coerced at that point. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, you, you, I'll wear a chief's jersey if it's number 87 and it's autographed by the man himself. You heard that here because I like Kels. I do. So, so you if know. you had a 15 jersey signed by the man himself, you wouldn't wear that? Oh, I wouldn't turn that down either, but, you know. <laughs> I'm I'm not going to lie. Full disclosure, it's my dream to own an office one day where I've got all 32 teams' jerseys hanging up, you know. So if I can get a, a jersey from a great player from every team, and um, wow. Well, since you're calling your shot, I'm just going to put this out there. If I can get a signed double bacon cheeseburger by Big Red, I'll eat it. <laughs> I'll have to make a call then and see what I can do. <laughs> when he's not busy uh, drawing on people's faces on the team plane. Right. All right. I'm going to get on out of here. You guys like, share, and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. We we do have a doozy for you. We hope that it's as big as we think it is. We're not going to say anything and give it away, but make sure y'all stay tuned next week. Stay positive. Stay blessed. Big Show, take us on out of here. Stop being on bad terms with people you love. Death is real. 
permanent and random. See you next week. Mm, I like that. Later. Later.